Привет всем, драгоценные братья и сестры. Мы в программе «Время». И сегодня будет чудесное время со Словом Божьим. Я знаю, что Бог сегодня совершит чудеса. Он совершит сегодня что-то особенное для тебя, для твоего дома, для твоей жизни. Hello, all precious brothers and sisters. We are in program time, and today will be a wonderful time with the Word of God. I know that God will do miracles today. He will do something special today for you, for your family, for your life. I think it's a very, very cool time. Today I want to say at the beginning of the broadcast that you can now write your questions to the call center. Apostle Liv, He will definitely answer your questions. Already have a phone number. Here is the phone number you write to us. Call. We will answer you. Yes. Right now you can write to ask questions, write needs, and, of course, we are in direct contact with you. We are live. And you know, yesterday... We had such a special evening. We talked about how it happens, happens in people's lives. When a person has experienced something difficult, terrible in childhood, and how is this childhood, these events, how can they affect a person's whole life? How much, too, how difficult childhood can be? But how far can God take and raise a person even with the most difficult childhood, even with the most terrible experiences? Even such people who may have been humiliated and insulted, who experienced fear and horror. And today I say, we will continue this topic, and, you know, this is a very important topic, actually important, because we all experienced something in childhood. In general, you know, it is surprising that every person sees that there is a struggle around all the time. In every community, Everywhere there is a struggle for some kind of superiority, somewhere, for some kind of careerism, somewhere, as they say, for a place, and so on. Everyone tries to assert himself at the expense of someone, wants to humiliate himself in order to justify himself by blaming another. This is the law of this world, and the Bible is the word of God, our Lord Jesus. He teaches us completely opposite things, things that this world cannot teach, because it is completely opposite. And today, even talking about childhood, You know, I remember my childhood, and I remember those terrible things that I had to see, that I had to experience in childhood, and you know, these things, they were really, you know, tragic. I remember I was about four years old, maybe five years old. And so I decided to kindle a fire in my grandmother's hayloft, and we were with another guy, you know, He was dressed, and I was stripped, and I set fire, and he put out with his boots. I didn't have any shoes, nothing works. I lit it a second time, he put it out, and then, when I lit it for the third time, he took it and ran away. And the hayloft flared up in seconds, and the hayloft was attached to the house. And there were pigs and various cattle, and imagine it all burned down. The pigs squealed. They burned alive. The whole house burned to the ground. And of course, you know, it was a tragic event. My grandmother, she experienced it very tragically, and grandfather, three months later, he died of a heart attack. And her grandmother, she took us all to her sister. Her name was Baba Duzia. She is a woman. She hated me with a fierce hatred. 
Because she had to borrow money from my grandmother so that she would buy a house. You know, when she bought the house, she lived in it herself, this old woman, until her sister gave the money. Every day she cursed, every day she cursed me, cursed, every day she said, damn you, damn you. In fact, since my childhood, Every year I ended up in the hospital, every year. Imagine, I crashed on bicycles. I cut my legs, very seriously. I was constantly in the hospital for several months every year. This is a curse on my future, it affected me a lot. But I I want to tell you that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what happens to your life, you should know that God can still lift you up. He has already taken your life, in which everything seems to be crippled by childhood. It's like the foundation of a kind that is laid in childhood. You know, scientists have calculated that 75% of the information that a child receives before the age of five, he carries through his whole life. But God gives us a new beginning. He gives us birth again, and he is strong to take our weaknesses, turn them into strengths, because he is God. He works miracles. You know that great people like Joyce Meyer, this is the most famous preacher in the world, imagine her, her father raped her, but you know that she could have remained just destroyed inside, broken, destroyed, but she became a preacher, a world preacher, who today brings healing to women and men, brings healing to millions of people. So today, whatever happens to you, Dear brother, dear sister, other teenagers, youth, all sisters, brothers, listen, whatever happens to you, you should know that it doesn't really matter. When you are with God, you must know God. He is the master of your life. Amen, amen, he will do a miracle. He will do great things. You know, yesterday we were talking about David. King David, Jesus, son of David, they say, the millennium, millennium kingdom of David. And soon it will be. But who was David? Yesterday, the transfer of time, we sat here live on the air and talked for who David was. When Samuel came, God told him to come and anoint one of the sons of Jesse. And Jesse is the father. He gathered all the sons of seven people. And you know, God chose Samuel the wrong one and says all seven, are all sons here? He says no, there's an even smaller one he tends the sheep. You know what? Jesse was a good dad, and he didn't even consider David his family. He didn't even consider David a son. When the prophet Samuel came, imagine that the president arrived. Yes, yes, he didn't even call him. He could leave the slaves with the sheep, but call his son, but he did not call him. It's not that he called, but somewhere he felt some pretty bad feelings for him. And this, as I said, can only be guessed from the word. You know also, David says, my mother conceived me in a flaw. Therefore, perhaps Jesse hated David because, perhaps, there were some situations that are not described in the Bible. But you know, David experienced incredible rejection. David experienced incredible rejection. Incredibly, he just lived all the time. Like an ordinary slave, like a shepherd. He simply was not even a person. He was like no one. He spent time in the fields with these sheep. He had to fight for the sheep and remained faithful to his father. He didn't understand why his father treated him the way he did. Today, maybe sister, you think I don't understand why my father treats me like this? Why did I grow up?
Он просто Maybe you're already an adult. Maybe you were already 50 or maybe 60. And you think why my father did this to me? I don't know. And we can all ask this question. A tragedy in general today. Look, this irresponsibility of fathers. Most of the people on earth grow up without fathers. Fathers who even love their wives there today. They marry. They confess their love. They swear fidelity. Only death will do us part there and everything else. But then, when all of a sudden he was even in church, he was just starting to rise in business. Millions of dollars began to come in. And he already told me, you see, my wife is bad, she is not from God, but this girl is from God, and he takes himself 20 years younger and says, here she is from God, and he doesn't want to listen to anyone, because he has already become someone like that and love disappears. You look at fatherlessness, this is a scourge, it's even worse, when even a mother like that who could simply not love, could simply reject. All of this can affect you. You know, today's broadcast, here we are in this broadcast talking if healing is a serious matter. Can we find a way? Can we find healing? Can we find happiness? You know my Victoria, she never saw her father and her father never saw her. Although they lived in the same city. And imagine, Vitachka knew where he worked, and he knew where Vitachka studied, but he simply did not want to see her. You know, it's worse if he didn't know. Он работал, и Виточка знала, где он работает. Он знал, где Виточка учится. А все время постоянное сообщение было, как бы, но он просто не хотел ее видеть. Знаете, это хуже, если бы он не знал, как ее увидеть. Да, да, я да. даже помню, даже пастор, даже вот я вспоминаю свое детство, да, вот ты даже вчера за Давида делился, и сейчас, да, говоришь за этот, за то, что многие отцы даже бросают, да, и я вот даже вспоминаю, как у меня был такой момент, когда нас э, отец тоже оставил, он пил, mm. очень жестко э, пил, да, и нас тогда осталось там трое, да, там брат, сестра. Even now I remember my childhood, but even yesterday you shared for David and now I speak for it, for the fact that many fathers abandon their children. Yes, I even remember him, how I had such a moment when my father also left us. He drank, he drank very hard, and then there were three of us left there, brother. Sister, dressing up, that is, it was total tough. And then you still know when you go to school as a child and when you don't have a father. Imagine how much I suffered when everyone pointed fingers at you. Yes, they beat you somewhere, rejected and didn't accept. How would you learn when the action turns into some kind of humiliation? And in fact, even I even remember, and you are already in life, starting from childhood and right up to the very same and have not yet shown yourself to church, have not come, it dragged on, that is, all failures, fears there are insecurities, that is, your soul. And now how inside you are no longer a person, that is, how can you even understand who it is you don't know who you are? Yes, 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 because you know so much. We find out who we are through those people who we open their eyes to us past 100% A. There are people who, on the contrary, inspire us with fear. They inspire us with rejection inspire us with pain, they inspire us in general with self-doubt, you know? And because of this, you know, there are people who have gifts to open gifts in others, yes, yes, to raise others. And there are people, they are demonized. Unfortunately, fathers are demonized, they say the opposite, and you will not succeed. 
You know this is scary. Just imagine, even my brother and I were and my grandmother confessed in his life that he would be a bandit. He would grow up to be a bandit and imagine, and in general he is still a boy. He is seven years old, and I am nine years old. He grew up like this, as they said, a bandit, but a bandit. But just imagine, that is, you think he is bad and how you condemn him, that he is like that, it's like they released him into his life, damn it. Yes, that's right, freed the words. I really understand how important it is when you are properly brought up in childhood. But unfortunately, in most cases this is not the I also had a moment when my father was imprisoned. And I remember I was eight years old, and he was in prison for seven years, and all this time I was waiting for him to come out. And from the moment he was imprisoned in my childhood turned into a curse and everything went wrong. In all areas, a complete curse, rejection by friends. Maybe it will be at school, be it in the yard be it girls, but as if no one needs you, you are unpleasant, like an ugly duckling. What you become, as in one moment, when the curse comes, and you can't do anything about it. I just received healing, as when I just came to church and experienced the love of my father. I realized that there is a Heavenly Father who really loves me, and I personally experienced it, and only then did I understand it. Just imagine what you said yesterday, there were many like that, and when we came to God, we kind of already had the destiny of David. God, why didn't I hear this before? Where were you before this moment? Everything really began to change. You become a different person, you just know yours. You understand how it turns out, even when we grow up, we even come to church. And even in the church, being, if we do not hear the teachings, as now, here we are talking, yes, about things that take us out of the curse that we could be in as a child. I was worried, yes, I was already a pastor and imagine, I had one problem, you know what? I saw what was inside me, as if I put myself below other people, you know, below other people. I remember I had this moment when I realized it so clearly that when I see a person, some businessman or something, I start talking, as if I'm not talking. I have some feelings, fluctuations inside, you understand. When someone speaks to me some kind of authority, I immediately instantly get lost. And it's as if I even see. People are just people. I see them as normal. They all had a normal life. But I had a hard life. When people remember childhood, they say, well, as in childhood. But I always say, well, as in childhood. Yes, yes, how in hell I had a childhood. Yes, I didn't have anything good in my childhood, but your nightmare is one, and then in my youth, two, nothing good, unfortunately. Это не просто даже дух отвержения, это дух уничижения, который, который заставляет тебя с человеком говорить неправильно, mm -hmm. который заставляет тебя mm -hmm. uh, говорить God, uh, вот I had such an experience. I remember, I started to fight it, you know, I started to fight it. I realized that you know some kind of spirit which is like humiliation, it is the spirit of rejection, it is the spirit of humiliation that makes you speak incorrectly with a person, 
which makes you speak simply even with people with the wrong position. You understand. You put yourself lower, and therefore you say something is wrong. You understand. You say something wrong. And believe me, I was already a pastor, but I saw it all and I... I remember this moment. Then I realized it so clearly that when I encounter people, I see that they have a different life. They are like from another planet. They talk about things that I don't understand. You know how hard it is for me to understand them. Because I seem to this childhood is also humiliated. It was reflected in such a way. Even when I have already come to God, and I remember how I began to work on myself. I will tell you directly how it was. Yes, I remember how I took and specifically went to the store and bought clothes. Good beautiful clothes. Although I had practically no money, I found money and bought beautiful clothes. Then I found money and I bought a car. But not just a car, I bought a Jeep. I bought it simply because I wanted a Jeep. And I was directly treating this abomination inside myself. I bought a Jeep to be above others. Yes, not in the sense of being proud of other people, not in the sense of humiliating other people, but in the sense of elevating yourself inside yourself, you understand. I even remember when you don't have anything expensive, as it usually happens, for example, when you were given a watch or some kind of clothes, you feel so awkward. This is my personal experience. I called it from the outside to the inside, because we always talk only about what is inside and how outside. But there is from the outside to the inside. When you are destroyed inside, broken, you have nothing to take there. You have nothing to stand for. You have no way at all to resist. Maybe sister, well, they already disappointed you. They told you words of love, fidelity. Then they just took your girlfriend and left, and you no longer know who to believe you are already broken inside. You're a guy thinking, well, what should I do if I'm an adult? No matter what I do, I can't build a family life. I'm a bad person. You don't even blame anyone and you say, I'm a bad person. What's wrong with me? But you know, I realized what was wrong with me, and I started to do my best. I remember that Victoria, and I took it directly, went to expensive stores. We had no money, but we went in and pretended that we had money and specially began to try on clothes. And we measured it, we were talking to each other all the time. The time will come. We will come and buy it. The time will come, we will come and buy it. The time will come, we will come and buy it. It was as if we were starting to work on changing something inside ourselves, so that it would go from the outside, go into the inside. We stopped reconciling ourselves with this moment, because we realized that this is our problem. We cannot go on like this. You know, I experienced these moments as a pastor. You know that as a pastor, I experienced a moment of growth and when different people swam into the church. You know, serious people, sharks, so different, some kind of politicians, Businessmen who wanted to use me. Your constituency tried to impose some kind of network marketing on you. The church means something else, that God has changed us so much. That I could talk with any politician from only one point of view. I am older, he is younger. Even without talking. Because in one moment God showed me you are my child. You are the royal priesthood. Amen. You are a man of God. You should generally speak to them, not they to you. Yes, I remember. I was afraid that the traffic police would stop me. You know, it was fear. And I got so far in this that when the traffic police stopped me, I explained to them that they should give me money so that I could pray for them. I am responsible for my words. Then I also had one case when I almost gave one, but in order to find it, 
That was the only time I was fined, because I said, take your pick, or I will pray for you, or I will give you a fine now. And every person looked at me and said, I don't need a fine, pray for me, I'm the pastor of the church, I say, I'll pray. You know what it is. I wasn't afraid of them at all. They were afraid of me, you know. And those who traveled with me, they know how I like to communicate with them. There were legends for this. More than once, I was driving like this. I exceeded the speed very much and the traffic police stops me. Says, well, are we going to write a protocol now? I can pray for you now, and your life will generally change for the better, and you are for the protocol. In general, I argued with him like that. He argued, then the pastor says, I generally go to your church, at all, and he says, so you were just wondering to me, when is this heard on the road? Yes, I got into the car like that. After this incident, I was always more careful.